You see, one critical, critical morning factoid here. So we welcome into the House the Speaker Pro Tem, Jason White, Mississippi House of Representatives, District 48. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Paul. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. This um, this very critical uh, factoid of the morning. Did you know that hippos, when they sweat, they sweat pink? But contrary to popular belief, their milk is not pink. What do politicians sweat when they sweat? What is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully, to, to coming up in midterms, blood. <laughs> we, will, we will find out. How you doing? Everything okay? I'm good, man. I'm good. Let me give uh, this one here while we have a second because we can, we've got a whole other segment to go. But uh, just, Len, I tweeted this out a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, there was a press conference, not a press conference, press release yesterday that will affect a lot of people in this state. Uh, the uh, December 2021 is when it started. The Division of Medicaid released a competitive solicitation known as a uh, RFP, or the Request for Qualifications, I should say, seeking at least two but not more than three contractors to administer the statewide uh, Mississippi Coordinated Access Network, or in Mississippi CAN, and the children's program called CHIPS. Uh, five prospective contractors or offerers submitted qualifications in March of uh, 2022 this year. After an extensive evaluation of qualifications by Medicaid subject matter experts, DOM is providing notice of intent to award contracts to three officers, uh, officers, and that's True Care, Magnolia Health Plan, and Molina Healthcare. Final scores and rankings for the five offers submitting qualifications are included below. But the number one that came out on that was True Care, which is, you want to explain that, the nonprofit put together by Mississippi Hospital Association? Well, you are correct. Um, that was yeah. some big news yesterday that was, uh, we, we had some unrelated meetings at the Capitol yesterday, putting final touches on all the uh, final uh, changes to the code sections of uh, because of laws we changed this past year and so you mm -hmm. know there were some commas and some ands and ors we had to change around so we always have one committee meeting in august to handle that so we, we were there for that and usually draws a small crowd and the crowd was bigger than usual yesterday and we finally figured out why folks were humming, <laughs> <laughs> folks were humming yeah. around the Capitol because yeah. uh, notice had gone out with regards to the scores for the uh, new managed care contracts that will be coming out. And so no. it will be interesting to see because you are correct. They, they released the scores and rated them and, and stated, Medicaid stated their intentions to award contracts to Mississippi True. Magnolia and Molina. Um, now that will mean United, who is one of the current providers, uh, will be – will be out, if you will. And, and United is Centene, the no, same that, company? Or no, is, Magnolia. Is that Magnolia. Magnolia is Centene. So they're, they're still oh, there. So Magnolia is still in there. Then. Yes, sir. Magnolia okay. is owned right. by Centene. So, so how does this, how do you parse this out in a three-way? Not only, do we have three different people handling it in the, if, currently now? That's correct. Currently it is, it is Magnolia, United, and Molina. And so... Two of the three will still be there. The, the second and third scores were with Magnolia and Molina. So they will still be there. Mississippi True will be the new vendor to go with those two, I guess, as they do. And and let me say this. You would need you would need Drew here to tell you, the, their executive director of Medicaid, to tell you exactly how they decide and, and award different contracts for different populations of Medicaid patients. I know they group them mm -hmm. based on – whether it's age or specific um, health issues that those different patients have or beneficiaries have. And so one might take one group, one might get a different group and that sort of thing. But it will be interesting because um, I noticed, in, and if you looked at that document you were looking at, it, it talked about some uh, the scores. Part of them were based on some dynamic approaches um, to patient care and, and that sort of thing. Um, and that's why Mississippi True scored so high and why Magnolia scored um, high was based on something. Yeah. It, it was a little blurb in there about that. So it'd be interesting to see. Mississippi True has stated time and again on your program right here, um, the folks from the hospital association that they've got great plans and, and a great ideas on how to do this. So we will finally, um, it's, it'll be it'll be time for them to show us. Um, I'm excited yeah. about it. I'm glad they're one of the ones, and um, it'll be it'll be uh, interesting to see it unfold. I we, we will finally with, um, be able to measure that, I think, in a real way. Absolutely. I communicated with um, Tim Moore yesterday, and I think he said he would be glad to speak of it, but 
they have to go through a protest period, uh, I guess, from the people who didn't get it. And also, it's got to be it's got to run through the what is it, the public procurement review board. All of so they've got to do that. Do you have any idea how long that takes? I was I, I did hear I think it's about two weeks, but it shouldn't be that long. I think if you're going to protest, you've got about two weeks to file it. But then after you yeah. file it, it, it has to play out. And, and if there uh, is a filing, if there is a filing, that's correct. So, and we'll talk more about him. How uh, how ready is True Care to go? Because I think if this happens, when is the uh, the beginning of the new contracts. I think they'll get them in place, and then maybe the maybe the the uh, spooling up or, or getting mm-hmm. revved up to do it, and it would start at the first of the year. Maybe don't hold me to that. Yeah, uh, but I know it's not like instant. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't happen yeah. today. I, do you know? If, again, this is probably we've invited him on, and I'm hoping that he will uh, accept an invitation to tell the people of the state more about this contract and the other contracts, uh, Drew Snyder. But do you know if the chips is handled by just one individually or exclusively, or is it meted out to all I, of them in part? I don't. I, I want to say it's maybe in two parts, mm-hmm. and maybe Magnolia has part of that, and maybe United had part of it. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, no. I'm not sure. I'm, I would as have to. far as the hospitals are concerned, they've been anemic, as you, you know, we've talked about on this on this network for for many many moons now. So as far as them being able to get their payments in. And, and all of this stuff that should cure that, I, I would think. Well, so they, we'll see what happens. They'll, they'll certainly, you know, they'll they'll have a seat at the table and be right in the middle yeah. of it. So it'll be interesting. I, and to I'm, see. I'm, I know you're a speaker of uh, pro, speaker pro tem. Have a lot of meetings during the uh, summertime. What's what's which ones are going on? Which ones uh, this early on? Well, like I said y- yesterday, that was just kind of a. a, a standard pro forma thing we do to to clean it up based on what the attorneys tell us where we've Mm -hmm. left off or or misnumbered a page or something like that in in the laws that were changed um there'll be a lot of meetings this fall um related to um women and children you know the the lieutenant governor has named his um commission or his committee on that topic um and the speaker is is working on his as well i know members some house members have already been notified that they've been put on that committee so they'll be meeting this fall and having some hearings i know there there's going to be some hearings on insurance uh chairman zuber our the house insurance chairman and walter michelle in the senate um, they've worked on several things from wind pool to to looking at drug uh coverage and how it relates to um, policies in the state um, there's probably going to be some meetings on where we go with this Blue Cross Blue Shield thing with uh, University uh, Medical Center. Um, Who would have thought that hadn't been settled yet? That's right. I get lots of calls about that. I would imagine postpartum is going to be on there too. Huh? Yes, yes. I'm sure it'll be part of those discussions of those. You talk to the speaker those. at all? Has this been uh, something that he's willing to give a little bit on, or where does it stand now, especially with the Dobbs decision? Well, we've we've had. Tons of conversations about it, Paul. Um, the the issue is, is it the best way forward for our state? And and you know, in his defense, he did ask state Medicaid for some data on it and their position on it. And to this day, we've not gotten that. Um, and so, you know, we may end up having to make a decision and a call as as policymakers about what is best for. Um, and, and let's keep in mind those are those are folks that are on Medicaid. The mother is not a qualifier for Medicaid. She simply goes on to Medicaid because she becomes pregnant with a child who the state deems will be on Medicaid when it's born. And so for that reason, she has coverage through her pregnancy and for two months after. Um, And so the the extension would be taking that two months after for her care, not for the child. The child will be cared for. The issue Mm -hmm. is the mother's care going forward. And we're going to that when people talk about extending postpartum care, they're talking about adding from two months, they're adding additional 10 months to her health care. And that's that's the issue is what gives on that? How much does it cost and where does it lead us? But ultimately, her health is a lot dependent on the child's health, especially if she's breastfeeding, et cetera. Sure. Well, or the child's health is dependent on her health. I, I would agree. Well, with I, mean, that. I meant her. Yeah, I meant the, the vice versa. <laughs> yep. Okay, so those are some of the hearings that are that are taking place, and more will happen a little bit later on. What, what where's the budget? Man, the money continues to come in. If, if you saw, we finished, and and they're still like reconciling the final books on on twenty two, which we just mm-hmm. finished. You know, um, in July they're coming out with those numbers. Um, One point five billion is 
sitting over there in the checking account that was not spent over the last year. Um, and we're already up $50 million for the month of July. One point, one point what billion? 1.57, I think, was the you figure. Know, you, you know what that causes? Some scratchy or itchy pins. Man. It does. Whoa. It does. Some people say get right. scissors out with a tax cut. I don't know. Well, maybe step it up a little bit. That's not a bad idea. We'll talk more about that. Uh, those were the easy questions, the tough ones coming up with the Speaker Pro Tem, Jason White, Glenn Antizo, the professor at the Political Science Mississippi College. Wait till you hear this one. They want to send FBI agents to Missouri to check everybody's concealed weapons. The AG said, hell no. Well, that story. FDIC. Super Talk always uh, beaming and streaming. Audio, video, hometown station, supertalk.fm. On your smart device, on YouTube, Roku, Super Talk TV, C Spark TV, Channel 70. Ceasefire text line at 601-879-4395. The Speaker Pro Tem, uh, Jason White, is in the House District 48, which is where? What, uh, uh, District 48 is? <coughs> Parts of Holmes, Carroll, Atala, and Leak County, Paul. Oh, man, we, the heart of the state, isn't it? We call it God's country, but yes. Um, I, there was one story. Oh, yeah, here you, it is. Hey, you need, to know, you need to know you're not here in studio. Perez and I, we've got out the good cups. Uh, he brought a little foreman grill. We're doing some breakfast later in the blue room in there, and you're missing mm -hmm. out up here. I don't you know bring, if you checked in lately. You bring donuts? No, we brought other stuff. We're, we're going to have a buffet here in a little bit. Chris Lots? <laughs> we got Farm Bureau to sponsor. Well, I, I need a medical runner is what I need. I asked, I asked Perez, <laughs> should we invite you? He said you're on a need to know. So, you know. That's, bas that's basically it. Uh, two, two seconds after I'm finishing, uh, my travel plans included uh, two doctor's appointments. So there, that's my day's taken care of. Now, the, the, uh, another one bites the dust, I, I should say, put it that way. The Highest Care LLC is the name of the, the company. And Highest Care LLC has been granted a license to operate as a dispensary for medical marijuana in the very search of first for the county, Adams County. So, uh, so far, the state has granted 107 licenses uh, to medical marijuana in our state, 107 licenses. One is for a transportation entity. One is for a disposal facility, seven are cultivation, two are micro-cultivation facilities, and three are processing facilities. That is a story from the, uh, I think, Natchez or AP. Uh, I, I, I think that's where it was from, but don't hold me to those numbers. But Natchez also now will have a dispensary as they move forward with that one. Which leads me to this question. I had uh, Chairman Blackwell on this week, and he said that some of the meetings that you guys are having or some course corrections in some of the languages of the marijuana bill. Yes. It, um, he and Lee Yancey continue to run point on that. And there, there will be as, as department of health mm -hmm. kind of wades through this thing. Um, and it's a, as you know, it was a big bill and a whole, whole lot of stuff as we create a whole nother, uh, industry and section of law in our state. So yeah, there, there, there's going to be a few, um, course corrections, as you say. And so they're, they're working on that, and he's on top of it. And I've, I've got great faith in them to, to get it worked out. And they will well, be meeting I, on I, that, correct. And I would imagine as uh, the commerce ensues and gets underway and they start selling this and et cetera, et cetera, you're going to find out more course corrections that need to be done. But you satisfied so far with the way it looks and how we're, how we're ramping up at this point? I am. Um, you know, there's there's been a little bit of confusion with some of our municipalities about you know, getting their ordinances in place and, and mm -hmm. how it's regulated within cities or within counties. And, and um, but, I, you know, I think everybody's, uh, for the most part, you know, been been straightforward. Um, these folks are investing real money, you know, in, in legitimate businesses here in the any, state. Any, any buzz out there at all uh, about maybe how comfortable this is within the Department of Health or should that make a change later or expand it, et cetera? I hadn't heard any from that standpoint. Yeah. Look, they, they've yeah. had they've been tasked with a huge, huge thing, and um, then on top of that, you know, we 
we sent them a bunch of ARPA money and asked them to deal with water systems and getting out those grants <laughs> as well. So, I know. You know, I don't know what they're going to send us for Christmas, but it may it may be a lump of coal. I don't know. We've, All right. we've sent them well, a lot. Let's get to this in the Neshoba County Fair because there's a lot of buzz there that uh, you're going to run for Speaker of the House that Philip is not. Um, I haven't talked to him in, 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 in several weeks. Uh, we've invited him on the, on the show. Uh, and I, I just me personally, and I'll ask you your thoughts. I, I think the reports that he's still making up his mind is probably accurate. But um, in any non-official capacity, what do you think the status is of this on your plans to run for speaker? The rumors out there, what came from uh, the Neshoba County Fair and what the uh, what are some of the the goals and plans of the speaker? Well. You've known the speaker as long as I have, Paul, and and mm-hmm. he's he's very deliberate and in, in what he does, and and um, I do think he's still weighing out specifically what he wants to do um, in the next election cycle and and over the next four years. You know, he's served as speaker now for he's finishing up his third term. Um, he had been in the house for a couple of terms before that. Um, as McCoy was speaker, you know, he served under that, and so you know he saw a huge swing and became speaker and um, that was the year I got elected and so I, I have served I, that's all I've known is Philip Gunn as Speaker of the House and what I've known him to be is is extremely conservative extremely fair and a great speaker um, I do think he's still considering that now having said that um, it's it's no denying and, and you asked the question about me running for speaker um, I've been in a position as pro tem and as rules chairman over the last six or eight years to help members with their projects and with their things, and um, I've enjoyed doing that. And so I have gained some respect among those, you know, my colleagues there, and lots of them are encouraging me to run. Um, So we've entertained that. You know, it was no secret. I think you asked me about it on air maybe last time I was here. I formed a PAC last fall, Mississippi House Leadership Fund, and we've been raising money, getting ready for elections that will be coming next year, um, specifically for house races. And anywhere where I've had a fundraiser in that capacity, I've explained to the crowd and the people there um, that it was strictly for um, conservative Republican members running for the House of Representatives. Um, and so, and, and we're, we've been very successful in that. Um, we've we fundraised from the coast all the way to uh, almost the uh, northern line of the state of Mississippi. Um, and we've been very successful. Folks have been very positive. So I'm going to continue to raise money. I have been meeting with members. Members have sought me out. Of course, you know, everybody's, it's, it's, It's politicians, and it's what we do, and that's part of, while that may have been news to hear that at the fair, that, hey, you know, different members are supporting Jason for Speaker. I mean, we've kind of been, you know, um, having those conversations as as a Speaker was rumored Mm -hmm. from everything from going to the U.S. Senate to running for governor now. I understand that. Rumors are are free, and they're just, uh, they're fun to toss about. That's right. Am I hearing you say that even regardless of what the speaker's decision is, you will run for speaker? No, no. But but I, you you won't see a Philip Gunn and Jason White race for speaker of the house. Okay, because some people were tossing that about. So no, if the I speaker know, I know if the speaker certain. decides to continue, then uh, you will continue as speaker. Pro, well, at his uh, uh, request, be the speaker pro tem. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot can happen between now and qualifying time. Yeah. But I think I think you'll know the answer to those questions way before then. And he's, you know, he's earned the right to decide and and announce at the at the time he chooses. And I'm certainly going to respect that. Um, but you know, I can't wait till December to decide. Hey, let's put a rate. Let's put a let's put something together and run for speaker. You know, a lot okay, but, goes but on. Help, help us out here uh, across the, this un- unbelievable network. How late is late? I mean, when when would you like to see it? When would uh, the speaker like to see this a decision made? Because you talk about qualifying deadline. That's not till March of next year, is it? It's uh, February 1st would be the deadline. Feb, Feb 1st, okay. Yep. You, uh, basically the month of January. That's correct. Then, then you have a lot of stuff going on within the legislative session that kicks off on the 1st of January and a little bit of an unrest in the, uh, in the leadership uh, and the uh, rank and file uh, as far as the House is concerned, to which history says – that you don't want all that rumbling in there. So when would you suggest, maybe in some of your discussions with the speaker, 
that a uh, deadline date would be? Um, tomorrow is tomorrow fast enough? Um, no, no. Being serious, we we yes. you will you will have a uh, we'll have a decision this fall, early this fall, and and no later. Uh, members want to know. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. it's not healthy for us to be kind of in limbo anyway. Um, things get squirrely. Um, you saw we had one of our. Uh, outstanding chairman announced yesterday that he will be running for Southern District Transportation Commissioner. Who is that? Uh, Charles Busby. So um, he is perfect for that. But that opens up, hey, that's another open seat yep. down on the coast. We'll have to, you know, be sure that, you know, those a candidate down there is, is – uh, Motivated, wants to run for that. So I'm just saying those kind of decisions are things that run out of the speaker's office. So we've got to, you know, we need to be engaged and moving forward. Is Tom going to run again as far as Tom King is concerned? I I have not heard. I do not know. Okay. Uh, You're scrolling on the bottom of your your thing as we go now about Mr. Busby. Uh, uh, let me put the scroll <laughs> up here. I had it deleted. Uh, Southern Miss baseball legend Corky Palmer passes away. Got that one. So, listen, we got more news. I mean, it's just it's it, it's it's flowing in so fast here. It's very difficult to consume it all. Jason White, final segment coming up next. Dylan Scott, Amen. Jason White, Mississippi House of Representatives, District Forty Eight, uh, Speaker uh, Pro Tem. Well, we somebody asked me what are we what the deal about uh, the speaker? Speakers, you know, decisions are you know go to the house, continue private practice, do whatever. But also the possibility of running for governor against Tate Reeves was uh, another option, and contemplating the possibility of accepting uh, maybe a position if offered to the community college board because they haven't filled that one yet. I think that's just some of the things on the table. So those are not easy decisions. Have you talked with him lately? I have. Um, he and I talked um, for lengthy yesterday after our meetings at the Gap. Um, we talked regular. He's a great friend. Mm-hmm. Tell He's me a great everything. Leader. That, tell me everything that was said. <laughs> 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 so. Paul, it's a big decision, you know. I know. Um, I know. He, he's he's done a lot for this state, um, and and while folks, you know. Sometimes want to want to I, I don't understand why want to want to target him and, and his leadership and and ding him a little bit. I just go mm-hmm. back and look. Go back and look at the. I, I know you know because you've been in the trenches. But yeah. but just look at the past session and and all of the conservative legislation that has flowed from under that dome over the last twelve years. Um, he's been in the middle of it, and in most instances, he's been leading yeah. on it. Um, and a lot of hard days and long nights um, pushing that stuff through, and, and he was there. And so I would just say, if nothing else, you know, 10 or 12 years of doing that would, you know, even even the best guy yeah. gets tired of that I mean, after I mean, a while. I'll just say this. The medal of a guy you get to know, and uh, he takes his faith very seriously. He takes his position very seriously. If you're a politician, much like a talk show host, you're going to find a lot of people who don't like you. You know, they want to come after you. That's just part of the game. I understand that journalism or talk radio or politician. That's part of the game. You have to have thick skin. But I I haven't met a lot of people who would um, back up a little bit on things like, let me a perfect example, the lottery. I mean, um, he let that go forward, to which we've had conversations. He was just absolutely positively against it, but... The majority of the people in the state were for that, and he had to put that aside. And it wasn't easy to do. It wasn't and easy I'll, for him to I'll, do. I'll leave it at that as a pretty darn good example. Let me ask you this as an attorney. Your thoughts, and just to get away from this, uh, your thoughts on the raid in, in Mar-a-Lago as an attorney. What, what were your thoughts? Well, well, my thoughts were first not as an attorney but as an American and thought, mm-hmm. you know, look, is this really – where this thing's going to go. You know, if I had told you that that was going to happen five years ago, you would have laughed and said, there's no way. That's not, you know, but now we're finding out, you know, and and you see um, during uh, President Obama's time and the folks that he appointed and got in place, you know, I I was reading some stuff last night. Um, It looks like we were headed down this road as, as, as as six or eight years ago. And it, it just... You know, and and we've all learned this with with time and age. You know, when when something doesn't pass the smell test, usually 
there there's a whole lot more to it and that looks yeah. that certainly looks like what this is is to make you him make hear, him some kind of way not able to run for president and and if they got to go back to the Logan Act if they got to go back to some archaic uh primitive thing but and I mentioned this a little early if you missed it the first judge recused himself yes. in his lawsuit did you hear that yes sir he's lawsuit, the one that signed the warrant yeah, yeah, and 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 that was the second judge who recused himself. That was Reinhardt recused himself, and all of this is they're just working in the background for this. And then the same judge that recused himself uh, in the lawsuit that he was supposed to be hearing for Trump filing against Hillary Clinton, uh, it turns out to be the same judge who served, uh, signed the search warrant. It was there a possibility of some incriminating stuff in those boxes against the FBI. Is it, is it a real possibility? So I don't Who know. Who knows? Who knows? Your final thoughts here from the uh, Speaker Pro Tem Jason White. Final thoughts are um, we're we're heading into the fall. You know, um, in spite of what the president said, I do think inflation is still eating us up. I, I saw he said it was at zero percent for July, but when I see my people at the grocery store or the gas station or anywhere else, that they they're not feeling a zero percent inflation. And and you know I'm proud we passed a tax cut to at least give our people in Mississippi some relief. And we're going to continue f- to look for ways to do that. Now, do you understand? Am, am I missing this or something? That zero percent would means it didn't go up above <laughs> eight point five or down. It went up. From the 8.5 a little bit to 0. Uh, 0.02. I'd love to see him open up for questions and let somebody just ask him what you just oh said God. and see what yeah. he would say. I believe, I believe, I believe for the next several days they're going to keep him back in Delaware because he doesn't want to answer any of these things, what he knew and when he knew it or if he knew it, because it's going to be a bad answer both ways. Always good to have you, sir, and I appreciate your honesty and being up front. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.